It's a beautiful fucking day outside, so let's talk about Active Directory. In order to talk about why AD is so fucking amazing, we have to talk about what it is first. And that's the hardest part of explaining Active Directory, because there's nothing else to compare it to. So what is Active Directory? First, let me give you my definition, because I've crafted what I think is a beautiful definition. And then, let me explain exactly what it all encompasses, because it's, it's no one thing, and no one else has a product that has the same set of things. And then on top of it, Microsoft likes to call a lot of other things Active Directory that aren't really part of Active Directory. My definition of Active Directory is an extremely intuitive, flexible, and seamless implementation of Kerberos authorization, authentication, and network logon, backed with an LDAP compliant directory used to store security, organizational, application layer, and configuration data for users and computers that's replicated in a geo-redundant and fault-tolerant manner that's extremely easy to administer and understand, leveraging DNS for service discovery and other modern technologies and innovating where necessary to make administrative overhead intuitive. Imagine yourself in any scenario where you have to manage multiple computers. Let's say more than 20. Let's say you're running a computer lab, or a school, or a business. It's the early 90s and you got two options. Option one is you go to every single computer, configure it exactly how you like it, hope no one changes any of the settings, and employ a support team that constantly is fixing the computers, changing configurations back to what they're supposed to be, policing users, and managing where users save their data. If you have Windows 3.1 or Windows 95, there's no username and password, there's no profiles, there's no separation of security. If you use Windows 98, you might have like a username and password for like applying your wallpaper in certain like Windows settings, but that doesn't actually provide any security and that's not actually authenticating you someplace. The other option is you buy software like Novell Netware or any number of other commercial solutions that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and require you to load software to all of the computers and this would allow you to finally have a central repository of usernames and passwords and accounts and it would allow you to control access to file shares and permissions based on a multi-user environment. But this costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's not baked into the operating system and you have to teach your users, your support support staff and your administrators how to use it, and it's not very simple. On top of it, the security is not state of the art, and it's not an industry standard, so you can't just buy other programs that automatically know how to use your username and password. Any third party systems that can plug into it still prompt you for using the password. There's no cohesive single sign on experience, and it's not integrated with the operating system. The software in this day and age sucks at locking down users from fucking up the computer. Enter Active Directory. You may have heard of Microsoft Exchange. It's a mail platform that allows people to send and receive mail in a business. Microsoft already was leveraging a directory in Exchange that had usernames and security and permissions and groups and distribution lists. So they extended this into the operating system SAM database. Active Directory works by creating a trust relationship between member workstations, in other words, the computers in your business, and the domain. The domain is not a physical thing. It's a logical concept, and technically, at its core, it's just a Kerberos realm. The domain is a set of computers called domain controllers that perform security transactions and other functions for users and computers that are members of the domain. It's a completely logical construct. You can have multiple domains on one network, and you can have a domain spanning multiple networks and even the internet. Every modern version of Windows that has the ability to join a domain, which is professional, premium, enterprise, embedded, and ultimate, have Active Directory software at their core. Any server version of Windows, so Windows Server Standard Enterprise Data Center, they have the ability to promote themselves into a domain controller. Domain controllers are just Windows servers running Windows that have a service running in the background that does all the security shit. They're nothing special, and the word domain controller actually leads people to thinking that they're a little bit more interesting than they are. 
I remember an intern once asking me, how does the domain controller actually connect to the network? And I said, with a washing machine hose. It's just a fucking Windows computer running Windows Server that has a service running in the background and a couple extra management snap-ins that allow you to create users and manage users and create group policies and edit them. There's a service running called the KDC, which is the Key Distribution Center, which is basically the Kerberos server. And there's a service running called AD Domain Services, which is like the LDAP server. Both of those plug into the native operating system's SAM database, which is the security database that handles security transactions. And outside of that, there's really not much to it. A Windows machine is either joined to the domain or it's not. If it's not, it's part of a work group. Work group basically means that if two computers try to communicate using any of the normal Windows services, they have to use work group authentication or MTLM, MT Land Manager Authentication, which is basically, hey, here's my username and password. Is this right? Do you have a corresponding account locally on your system? If so, we can use these resources. Without Active Directory, Windows can still share services between computers on the same network. It's just you have to configure the accounts manually on each computer. If the username and the password on one computer matches the username and password on another computer, more accurately the password hash, Windows NT based operating systems will let you in and communicate. There's no central repository and every computer has to know about every account that's getting used or they have to use anonymous or guest access which is even less secure. And there's no group policy so you can't lock down what users can do or access outside of file system permissions. When you join a Windows computer to a domain, things are a little bit different. A computer that's joined to a domain is either a domain controller or it's a domain member or a member server. When you join computers to the domain, it creates a computer account automatically, and every computer has a secret password that it negotiates with the domain that a human never sees. Every 30 days, the computers renegotiate the password, and that's what creates a secure channel between all of the members of the domain and the domain controllers. This allows any of the members of the domain to authenticate users from any other computer without having to talk to a domain controller. This is a really complicated protocol called Kerberos, but basically it's like a three-headed dragon where you have a user on a computer, the domain controller, and an application server all participating in this agreed-upon cryptography magic that allows people to authenticate to services via a domain controller, but without the domain controller ever having to actually be there. It's really nice because it means that if you're using a really rapidly used service like a web proxy, or a website, or a file share, you don't have to constantly call up the domain controller and be like, hey, is this guy's password legit? Is this password okay? Is this guy authenticated? Is this guy allowed to use my service still? Because that creates a lot of network traffic, and in the 90s or in branch offices or when you have a WAN that isn't always connected, that gets really fucking pain in the ass real quick. Microsoft knew that Kerberos was extremely complicated to configure and to get working and keep working which is why they made it extremely seamless. There's plenty of normal situations where Kerberos just doesn't normally work. Over the internet, when DNS is unavailable, tons of reasons. Microsoft knew this, so they created a fallback called Negotiate. All of the security in Windows uses Windows Authentication, which is code word for Negotiate, which technically means try Kerberos first if it's available. If Kerberos isn't available, authenticate using the most secure version of NTLM that's available. If you remember before, NTLM was what your workstation machines used to authenticate to each other using password hashes. This works between machines on the same domain if they're aware of the other user's credentials or if they can talk to a domain controller. Microsoft further abstracted the complexity of joining a machine to a Kerberos realm by making joining a machine to a domain as easy as typing in the domain's DNS or NetBIOS name and having a necessary administrator username and password. A lot of complexity is abstracted by the use of DNS and SRV records. One thing that's really interesting is that on a domain controller, the directory of accounts, the, the actual active directory, becomes the local SAM database. So domain controllers don't have local accounts. All of the local accounts on the domain controller are literally the accounts in the active directory, and if you try to modify any of them, you'll just modify AD. For this reason, all domain controllers literally share the same administrator account, administrator's group, and guest account, along with a bunch of other built-in accounts. This is why if you install services on a domain controller, like the DHCP service that use groups, the groups that would normally be local groups wind up being domain groups.
Once a machine is part of a domain, it participates in what's called group policy. Group policy is Microsoft's ingenious method of distributing configuration settings for users and computers. Group policy is fun. If you like level editors in games, group policy is like the level editor for Windows. You can take any subset of users or workstations and define restrictions, defaults, preferences. Pretty much anything that you can configure through the file system registry or a script can be pushed to machines through group policy. Group policy also allows you to unlock huge numbers of undocumented and enterprise-only features that Microsoft puts into Windows for governments and businesses alike, but are so niche that there's no control panel or UI for them. When a machine is joined to the domain, it typically boots up to a login screen. After a user puts their username and password in the box and hits enter, if the domain controller is available, they're authenticated against the domain controller and they receive a brand new security context, including a brand new Kerberos ticket granting ticket, a list of their group membership, and all kinds of information that the machine needs to communicate with other systems in the domain. If a domain controller isn't available, cache credentials on the machine may allow the user to continue logging in even if they're not online. The only way that this wouldn't work is if a machine either has never logged the user in before and just doesn't know the user's password hash, or if the administrator specifically turned off cache credentials. This means that it's pretty much seamless for a user to use their password, whether they're on or off the network, whether the domain is available or not. Windows will automatically connect to the domain when it becomes available in the background and pull policy settings down even if it wasn't there when the machine logged in. This can create a little bit of complexity because it means you could be logged into Windows with a password that isn't your current password and it means that Kerberos kind of starts failing after a while and uh, Windows, again, abstracts this beautifully. You get little notifications, hey, Windows needs your credentials. They never really explain what happened or why it doesn't know your password, but, you know, because of modern security and cryptography, your workstation has no way of knowing your new password. It's not going to get it over the wire and you're going to have to type it in. Active Directory implements some of the most seamless replication I've ever seen in a product ever. Microsoft calls it multi-master replication. It is extremely seamless, flexible, granular, and amazing. There are countless applications that store their information into Active Directory. Microsoft's own DNS product uses Active Directory to store the DNS records as AD objects. User accounts, computer accounts, group policy objects, all of Microsoft's certificate services, distributed file systems, tons of their services store their information in Active Directory because it's always available, and when it's not, the computer already gracefully handles it. Active Directory replicates using a high-speed process over RPC, and in the early 90s, and I guess you still can, it has the ability of even replicating over SMTP, or email. I mean, think about it. In the 90s, user accounts didn't change that often. Systems were rarely interconnected, and email was a platform that a lot of businesses had. They had relays and servers for it, and it was a decent backhaul to rely on for periodic updates of user information. These days, though, we use RPC, and it replicates almost instantly. To work in extremely diverse business environments and companies that are international, with different organizations and branch offices, sites and services, are used. Active Directory replication topologies can be extremely versatile. You can have any number of sites, and sites control a number of location-based services across all Microsoft products. You would create a site for any kind of building or cluster of buildings in your company or school or enterprise that essentially you want to make sure that people get the closest server within that site. Domain controllers are always in one and only one site, and computers find the closest domain controller by first locating what site they're based on. Each site is bounded by a list of subnets or network address ranges, and every Windows operating system has a location discovery mechanism built into it to locate the closest domain controller based on which site it detects it's a member of, based on which IP addresses it detects. When your computer boots up, it looks at its IP address and figures out which site it's in based on some really interesting DNS magic using SRV records. Once it knows what site it's in, it knows which domain controllers to use for LDAP, Global Catalog, Kerberos, all of the protocols that Active Directory uses for authentication, authorization, and directory lookup. Besides the replication topology, Active Directory has a versatile hierarchical topology. Like any other LDAP compliant directory, the domain is broken into organizational units or branches. It's kind of like folders. All of the objects, whether they be computers, users, file shares, whatever object that is stored in the directory can be put into any OU. Administrators can move objects between OU simply by dragging and dropping them. 
All objects in Active Directory can be renamed at will without any impact to anything. Now we've been talking about Active Directory domains, but you might be thinking about DNS domains every time I talk about the word domain. And that's no mistake, Microsoft Active Directory is extremely DNS centric. When you create an Active Directory domain, you're also creating a DNS domain. And the hierarchy of Active Directory domains follows the DNS hierarchy. Sales.contoso.com can be a subdomain of Contoso.com, just like HR.contoso.com or Marketing.contoso.com. Domains are also transitive. All of the people that have administrative power over Contoso.com have administrative power over Sales.contoso.com, but not the other way around. You can think of the objects in the domain hierarchy as following the DNS hierarchy of authority. These groups of domains that are hierarchical at the DNS level are called trees, or domain trees. Let's say your company, Contoso.com, purchases another company, Turds.biz. Each of them already have an existing Active Directory tree. Well, you can join these trees together even though they don't have similar domain names by creating a forest. A forest is a collection of Active Directory trees. All of the domains are interconnected using what are called trusts. When a domain is a subdomain, it automatically creates a implicit transitive trust, but you can also go around creating external trusts if you want to start authenticating users in someone else's domain, or if you have some other Kerberos realm in your company that you want to be able to access Windows machines. But none of this is necessary. All of that shit is just additional buttons and whistles. Just creating the domain is enough to get all of this shit by default. If you want network login, if you want group policy, multi-master replication, you get that all just by creating a domain. You don't have to set any of that up. It's so easy. And the security is the best part. Every object in the directory has its own ACL. Windows ACLs are amazing. They're essentially lists of things or security principles, basically users, groups, or entire organizations, that can and cannot get to a resource. Windows ACLs are ACLs, or DACLs. They support inheritance, they support inheritance blocking, they support claims, they support custom levels of permissions. For example, if we're talking about a print queue, you can control whether someone can see it, print to it, manage it. If we're talking about a user object, we're talking about whether or not you can reset its password, change its properties. If we're talking about a group policy object, it's whether or not you're allowed to apply it, whether or not you're allowed to edit it. The Windows security ecosystem begins and ends with Active Directory, and it is amazing how well it works together when you just have systems that are part of a domain. Non-Windows enterprises often suffer from siloed account syndrome. The accounts are not centrally stored because the systems take so much configuration and additional services to do network logon in a seamless manner that it becomes a security threat to configure all of that overhead just to get network logon working. But in a Windows environment, the security is built in and it's always there, and it's there whether you want it or not, so it makes sense to just use domain accounts. When you're creating a script that runs in the middle of the night, make it its own account in the domain. You don't need to make a local account on the server. You don't need to put your own password in there. It is so easy in the Windows world to have things run as their own security context that is globally known that can be looked up in the directory. And the fact that the directory supports LDAP basically means that any application in the world that can hook up to a directory can read about the user objects. Any application that supports LDAP can authenticate using your AD credentials. And any application that has the ability to read and write LDAP has the ability to store information in the directory and take advantage of multi-master replication and the Windows beautiful security ACLs on the Active Directory objects and the directory tree. All in all, the reason why I think Active Directory is so impressive is because it represents the golden era of Microsoft where they took modern breaking edge security and technological concepts like LDAP, Kerberos, public key cryptography, and they brought it up to Microsoft's own standards which are make it easy, make it extensible, and make it able to be leveraged by ordinary businesses and schools. 
You have no idea how many people install, operate, manage, and develop against Active Directory without having any idea about the beautiful Kerberos choreography happening under the hood. I've worked on Active Directory for over a decade without having a decent idea of the magic that actually occurs when you log onto a Windows machine and all of the unspoken about traffic that occurs to just make sure that you know, when you go to access a file share, it opens without having to ask for a password. When you go to sign into this service, or print to this printer, or look at this file, or cache these documents that your computer knows you're going to want off the network, just to not have to have a box come up and ask you for a username and password is something that you take advantage of, you take for granted if you live in the Windows ecosystem. And it's not until you try to get Macs, Android, and Unix machines to operate in a Windows environment that you realize exactly what kind of fucking feat Microsoft has accomplished. I am not a Microsoft fanboy. I hate their design choices lately. I hate their operating system strategy. I hate a lot of things that they're doing in the cloud space and the way that they're changing their licensing to subscription services like fucking Adobe. But there are things that are still being done properly at Microsoft and Active Directory is still one of them. You can get stuff like Samba, which will run on Linux and it will emulate a domain controller, but that's not the point. You're not going to be able to join a Linux box to the domain and just get a beautiful, seamless, coherent policy that gets downloaded from the system. If you've ever logged into a corporate computer and you've sat there and you've watched settings apply and the scripts run and all types of things locked down or manipulated and if you just watch it go doo -doo 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 -doo, applying computer settings and then it's like oh interesting these are not the settings i'm used to at home if you want your computer in windows 10 to not send information to big brother microsoft they call it telemetry you have to turn that off through your policy and you can only do that in windows enterprise edition microsoft's innovations are so deep that it's worth explaining some of them Kerberos wasn't perfect. In addition to abstracting the setup, the management, and the maintenance of Kerberos, Microsoft also added a whole bunch of shit to it. Kerberos didn't have the ability to change passwords, you know, the, the, the way that, you know, if you go to school or you go to work and you can hit control delete and you can change your password. On top of it, pre-authentication is something that Microsoft added to Kerberos. Kerberos was very trusting before Microsoft got to it, and the initial message that you would use to try to authenticate, you could pretty much do some brute forcing if you wanted to, and you can bet that Microsoft has TLS and public key cryptography wrapped around almost every component of the system. Whether it's the LDAP traffic, the file share traffic, or Kerberos itself, everything is encrypted with some type of cipher. Everything is stored with one-way encryption. There are no passwords that are reversible. There is no way to get a password back out in plain text. All of the passwords are stored using one-way hashes. Now, passing along the hashes once your computer knows them is a little bit of a different story that's gotten some bad press lately. But that's something to talk about on a different day. If you found my rant helpful, informative, or just plain interesting, feel free to subscribe to my videos. There'll be more like it. If you have any questions, comments, or misconceptions that I've unraveled for you, please post them in the comments below. And until next time, I'm Neil, explaining shit that you should probably know about. Actually, no, you probably should know about Active Directory. You probably would be better off if I didn't waste your time for the last 10 minutes.